The stock market continues to race higher as the economy falls apart. This is unbelievable to see the exact same euphoria that was present in January and early February before the major crash that took place. So investors have been more cautious as a result, right? No, of course not. Retail investors have bought the dip on hope not technical indicators not fundamentals literally just hope everyone step right up to the roulette table place your bets and hope for the best you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you today i have a massive video in fact i'm probably gonna have to cut this in two and do the other half tomorrow let's take a look at everything from the federal reserve to the stock market to the pe ratios to the economy to the job situation top to bottom let's go I'm sure you heard already, but this is the press release from the Federal Reserve. They kept interest rates at rock bottom. There was the expectation of bringing them lower, but they stayed at 0% to 0.25%. This was largely expected as far as I'm concerned when you look at everything. They are doing so many different programs right now. The whole alphabet is being used twice over in all of these different methods of pumping money out of thin air into the pockets of the big establishments that's what this is all about it's not about helping main street we know that we've already determined that this is about piling on the leverage they are doing this on a scale that we have never seen before i've got some charts to show you along with that but just want to give you an update if you haven't seen it already they have kept interest rates where they are and basically status quo with the expectation that they're going to keep them super low for a very long time essentially when the economy is back up and running whenever that is then maybe they will increase rates but at this time keep them low keep them steady this is an interesting article out of the wall street journal i'm just pulling this chart to show you rapid response Fed asset holdings have grown more sharply than during past quantitative easing or QE periods in which the Fed bought nearly $4 trillion in securities to stimulate the U.S. economy. This red line that you're seeing right here, that's the amount of money, the trajectory that we've seen the money printing happening. This is QE2, this is QE3, this is QE1. All of these are basically this linear fashion. As time goes on, they print some money they've been doing it they were criticized for it but certain participants as they like to use that word were all in for this they were saying please do it you're going to help my business you're going to help my portfolio my 401k whatever it might be this time around it's a rocket ship it's going straight up in the air and they do it for a certain reason because each and every time they need to print more money and they need to go to more extremes this cannot be sustained with higher interest rates they've determine that they know that this cannot be sustained without a devaluation of the currency but all central banks around the world have decided that now is the time for the spiral down they are doing this in a concerted method do not think that each central bank acts independently they are all doing it together this is very important you might see them as separate events this is an asynchronous method that is being done in order to destroy the currencies worldwide what do they destroy it against you look at the u.s dollar index it looks just fine but when you compare it to real goods that's when you get the picture we're seeing the destruction of your savings every single day and people should be speaking up about it but because the fact that this isn't linear it's not as if you print a dollar this is the exact response people will never see it they will never ever see it it could happen at a later date it happens indirectly and it isn't in a linear fashion you watch it in all of these different aspects of your life those who pay attention they figure it out just another update here on the Fed purchase says you can see the U.S. Treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities, what they have purchased so far and what they intend on in the future, at least the expectation there. They have quote-unquote tapered off, but that's coming from a high of, let's say, $120 billion or so. But when we have looked at this on a deeper level, we have seen the admissions of how much they are pumping into the system. It is unbelievable when you look at the daily repo operations, when you see what 
what's happening with their new programs and everything. It isn't covered in just these two aspects, the US Treasuries and the mortgage-backed securities. It goes far, far beyond that. You've got QE4 and QE5 running simultaneously. They've never done anything like this before. And of course, the market loves it, not because they are saying it's a good thing. No, 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 not at all. They're looking at this as a devaluation of the currency and money starts to flow in. This article here is talking about Jerome Powell out of the Wall Street Journal. They mentioned how the Federal Reserve and the government both pumping money in, worried about the debt, worried about the deficits, and he had this to say. This is not the time to act on those concerns. This is the time to use the great fiscal power of the United States, get through this with as little damage to the longer run productive capacity of the economy as possible. You know what? That's fantastic. You can do everything right now, but when the economy starts to pick up, let's say it takes a year, let's say it takes two years, whatever it is, are you really thinking that there's going to be a government out there, a central bank out there that is actually going to wind this down, that they're going to manage it? Of course not. Of course not. They don't have the fortitude to do this. They don't have the ability to actually reverse course. A lot of individuals will say that doesn't matter anymore. Anymore. But I would suggest to everybody just for two minutes, just sit down. If you haven't read into it already, which you should, but if you haven't, just sit down for two minutes and think to yourself, if they're printing $2 trillion in a matter of a month, why not print that $2 trillion and simply give it to people? Why do you have to buy junk bonds? Why do you have to do that when you could simply give the money directly to people? The economy would reverse from its downward trend almost instantly. If people see this massive paycheck in their bank account, go and get rid of all the other programs you're doing. Just pump the money into people's bank accounts. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to spend it. Sure, they might pay their debt first if it's really urgent, credit card debt, or something like this. But ultimately, they're going to go to the store. They're going to buy things probably using their old bad habits. And they don't do it this way. They don't pump money into the average individual because they never want to help people. They are trying to create a divide in between the haves and the have-nots. They created the Main Street Lending Program, and what do they do the whole time? They use these big banks in order to facilitate the transaction, and they made $10 billion in what days, I think it was? $10 billion just on the transaction being the middleman. Oh, but of course, somebody had to make the money from it, right? They had to have an incentive to do it. This is all a joke. And people, they say, well, you know what? You're talking bad about them. Why are you doing this like this? They're trying to help out. I've seen so many ridiculous comments and suggestions all the way through from the very top, all the way down. The people just do not understand. And why? Because they have skin in the game. Maybe they have a 401k. Maybe they got to seven shares of Amazon. Maybe they're worried about what they've done and overextend themselves with way too much debt. And they they say, don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the Fed. Can you believe this? This is a silly term that maybe I'll do an entire rant video about one day. Let me know if you want to see that. Let's move on. So much to cover. I want to talk about this subject a little bit here. Stocks charge higher on hopes for progress. You know, the hope and change is something we have heard a long time. Don't worry, good stuff is coming in the future. But what about the information that is, let's say, medium term? You're worried about long term when you haven't even seen the damage of the medium term. Sure, you can see what's going on short term. We know what's happening with the technical indicators. People are saying, Saying, well, let's just ignore all of that. We know earnings might be bad, but you don't have to worry about it simply because what we're dealing with right now isn't an issue for this group or that group and Amazon is going to be just fine and this company is going to do well. So let's just put our blindfold on and focus on it. Look at this. 
That green line there is the P-E ratio, which is now over 20 on the S&P 500. Over 20, historically going insane. Now, when you pull up certain stocks, you're going to see that way higher. But I just wanted to show you how this continues to get worse as time goes on. You can't go into these new normals, as they say, without a retracement, without problems that continue to envelop stock investors as as they feel that euphoria, they think that we are entering a time in which these type of indicators don't matter anymore. Sure, PE ratio is not the be all end all. I completely agree with that. But it gives you a sense of what's happening in the markets. You look at 100 different indicators. Now things start to make sense. Oh, no, 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 that doesn't exist anymore. Because the Fed is there. Have you not read any history whatsoever? The Federal Reserve has been acting involved in the daily operations of the financial system since their creation. Yes, today they're doing it at a level they've never done before. I've acknowledged that. I've shown that. I've documented that here. But they have been active to the amount that has been necessary in order to facilitate what they've been doing. They've been going crazy on this since their creation. They created this divide between the haves and the have-nots. We need to understand that. This has been going on for a very, very long time. It's been decades and decades and decades, and it gets worse as time goes on. They are not there to benefit your 401k, even though people believe they do. If you actually sit down and calculate it, how much your return is in most cases, the average person, 50% of that money is going and channeled into the wrong direction. I want to talk about that actually more about 401ks, and people need to really learn about it. I don't have time on this video, but that's a topic for a different day. GDP sinks 4.8% in the first quarter, biggest drop since 2008, and there is worse to come. We know it's going to be bad. We know it's going to be more significant on the way down as we enter the next quarter's data and we see what's really coming up with that. But this is the economy posting the biggest contraction in 12 years. Most people expected it to be bad. They've had the numbers, of course, but not everything is hurting right now. Of course, you have certain industries, whether it's restaurants, whether it's tourism, airlines, everything like this is going to be hit hard. But certain things have been doing very well. Let's just use the example of Amazon, which has seen a boost in the amount of its use of its sales. You can look at things like delivery services, which have increased dramatically. Certain companies, certain sectors, let's say, have done better than others. But regardless, when you see how many jobs are being affected by what's happening to Today, it's astronomical. I've seen numbers as high as 50 million people currently right now today are unemployed. There is a backlog of that information that still has to come through. I'm not even sure that everybody's going to be able to get through based on what I've seen. So many good people have been reporting their findings, their personal experiences or secondhand experiences in the comments. And I really, really appreciate that because not only are you helping me, but you're helping everybody else around the world to understand what's happening. This channel here is built from the grassroots. This is not a guru standing in front of you. This is you and I. We are students of the knowledge and we're just trying to figure out what's going on. We want the truth. Let's face it. All the people there that don't give a damn, they're not watching this video anyway. You and I, we just want to know what's going on. We want to know the truth. The economic decline in the first quarter reveals even weaker consumers and more unknowns ahead. This was expected, I believe. If you look at certain data, you're going to see it here on this video and the next one where, yes, it is pulled down, but that was largely expected. If people are just staying home, they're not going to work. They're not really buying much. Certainly, you're going to see a lot of this, particularly with the real estate industry as an example. Nobody's going out to see homes. Nobody's necessarily putting their homes on the market like they were before anyway. So, of course, the sales are going to be down. Now, does that necessarily mean that the prices are going to be falling dramatically? Well, not necessarily unless we have high unemployment rates, people can't afford things, they start to go in default and bankruptcy and all the way down the line. That's the expectation right now. But I don't think a lot of people have really even figured this out yet. They think it's going to turn around suddenly and everything's going to be okay. I'm not sure that's going to happen. 
Really quickly, I'll show you the real estate information. Pending home sales tank nearly 21% in March, but realtors claim prices will hold up. Don't worry, we've never seen a crash in our entire history as realtors. Therefore, we don't need to worry about one of those things. That was long, long ago. Essentially, what they believe is that the recovery will be so fast, there isn't going to be time for the market to fall and go higher. What they haven't factored in at all, because they don't know, a realtor doesn't know about this, if there are 50 million people that have lost their job, or there are 30 million people that have lost their job, this has an impact on the amount of people that are actually paying their bills. Then you have the derivatives, as I have shown many times before, which are on top of the real assets. Real assets down below, fractional reserve banking above, and then the big boy derivatives all on top of that you have a gust of wind it topples the whole thing over this is what i show in my first book i think it's really important to understand the way that it works it's not a pyramid which is a strong shape to triangle it's completely upside down that's the way the system is built it is an oversimplification but it's not that far off here you can see the pending home sales both month over month and year over year looking terrible right now Pending home sales in this chart here is the red line. You're also seeing the existing home sales and new one family houses sold. This has all come down significantly, particularly with the pending home sales, which has dropped to a level we haven't seen since 2011. When you look at all of this, I do believe this was largely expected. Everyone has been staying home. They're not buying. They don't have their usual spending habits that have been going on, particularly when it comes to real estate. There's not not many people out there that are going to put their house on the market because they know there's not as many buyers. They know that something they're trying to sell at this moment is probably better just to wait it out and then put it on the market after all the problems are gone. That's the way they see it. We'll see what actually happens. I'd be really interested to see all of the real estate markets around the world and how they deal with the impact of this it is going to be very, very interesting. Well, I've got about a hundred more charts and articles to cover, so I'm going to do that in the next video. I'll put that through into a new video tomorrow, so check me out. Don't forget to come to the channel as often as possible. I know a lot of people hit that subscribe button, they hit the notification button, and still are not notified. Many people are actually unsubscribed, even though they watch my videos every single day. So they're playing tricks. What you got to do is just come back to the channel. I post every single day. If you don't see a video from me every single day, something's going on. So if you want to support me, you got to hit that like button. That's all I ask. If you watch the ads at the beginning, that's fantastic too. I really appreciate it. I know many people, they say they just put the sound down they let the ad play through and then they watch the video and that's how they support me. And I want to thank you for that. Really, it really, it does help out. If you want to find me on Instagram and on Twitter, I create content for those every single day definitely check me out at the money gps online sales have picked up dramatically those who have been selling online have seen a dramatic spike in the demand they've been dealing with that it's kind of a good problem to have for many if you want to learn how to do this for free you could check it out at the amazon gps.com the financial system is convoluted, it's confusing, it's designed to keep you from the truth, and that's why I created these two books to make it easy, to get rid of that jargon and all that nonsense. If you want to check them out, you can use the link in the description if you want the audiobook at moneygps.com. This is so important. There's so much in here. It's jam packed. And this is the best performing video that I've had in a while. Definitely check it out. Click on it. I'll see you there.